now recording. Alright, we are live. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the next session of Tomb of Annihilation. This isn't the previous one? Nope. The previous one already happened. So when last we met, you had reached the top of Firefinger, defeated some terror folk, and helped retrieve the mask that Azaka had lost. And getting back down to the bottom, <coughs> you had all leveled up. Oh, yes, we did. I almost forgot. You wanted us to tell about, talk about uh, on stream, talk about what we changed. Yes. Oh, well, poor soul druids don't get so, much. It got, like, more perceptive. It took a feat. Hold on. Oh, you so, took a feat? In nice. Introduce yourself and your character. No, I mean, it wasn't a great feat. It was um, the, the one that gives a, a slight attribute increase and then an increase of perception. And Here, let me pull up my character. Can you not hear me anymore? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. I couldn't hear you before that, though. Yeah, were you talking? I don't know. I didn't notice if you were talking. Yeah, I was. Um, I gotta... you. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to say introduce don't yourself and going? your character, starting with, uh, I guess, on the bottom of the video screen. Nexus is first. Oh. Oh, introduce myself? Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, who are you and who do you play? And, and then tell ah. us what you gained for your level, if anything. All right. <clears throat> I, uh, I am a Scaly Dragon, and I play Nexus, the uh, sorcerer. Um, she is a, uh, a gnome sorcerer. Uh, and currently, she just got up to fourth level, and I gave her the uh, plus two to charisma, so her charisma is down 18. Um, and I picked up a couple of spells. Hold on. I picked up, well, I picked up Prestidigitation because I did not have it. I figured, why not? And uh, what was the other one? Oh, I picked up a second level spell called Dust Devil. Which is a, which will be, creates a little bit of a elemental dust storm of sorts. And they can cool. uh, do damage and push people away. It's It'll be really fun to to play around with that and see how that works. So I believe that's the only other spell I got, and some and a decent and, and I maxed out on my hit points. She is, uh, she's she is at thirty hit points now. She's a beefy sorcerer, as beefy as you're gonna get, anyways. Yeah, for a while anyway. Yeah, right. for a little while <laughs> until Thrax. I roll that really low roll, and then I'll be like, no. Thrac is next. Uh, hello, I'm Thon Arca. I play Thrak, the Dragonborn Paladin of Kelimbor. Um In the case of leveling up, I actually took the uh, ability score boost and... Wait, I... uh, oh, okay. I, I'm double checking to make sure I, I say this right. Uh, and I took ability boost in Constitution and... Strength. I also can now prepare one additional first level spell, and I was actually choosing it now. I'm probably going to go with one of the smite spells. All right, that leaves us with Twillin. Hi, um, Jeff. I play Twillin, uh, the forest gnome, uh, annoying druid. Um, he uh, leveled up to fourth and took a feat called Observant, um, which, as a, as a replacement to ability scores, gave me a slight increase to wisdom, but at the same time also let me increase my perception. It gave me proficiency in this skill. Um, as a druid, I also got like a, an extra spell slot 
<clears throat> and a minor B shape improvement. There isn't a whole lot you get it for for a druid. Sort of like a stepping. All right. When Matt gets here, well, hopefully he saw the note that everybody needed to level up. Now, does anybody remember how many days it took to get to Firefinger? Um, I believe it was three. Uh, hold on, let's consult from Matt. from like the city. Yes, from the city. Oh no, it was. Yeah, it was. It was a lot longer than three. I'm thinking it was um, five or six. No, not necessarily because. Right, because we took we had two down the river, I think, right? Two and like a half, basically, to the river, and then the actual traveling through the forest was another day. Plus, we spent a day in Firefinger, right? Because we slept there that once, or just outside of it, or something like that, right? No, we didn't. That's the whole point about Firefinger, right? When we arrived, it was like evening, and we decided to immediately go up it. We didn't wait at all. That's true. That's true. 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 So I think it was only like five days. Okay. Yeah, it was about five days because we can move two hexes a day via the river and only one hex a day via land, right? So that sounds right. Five days down river. Uh, this will be the sixth day. It sounds right. Okay. And we were actually going to pick up the canoes. And, and carry cross them. over to what was it, Camp Righteous, or basically the closest point on the River Shoshin yeah. yep. Star. Star. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna cross there um, and get on that and take the river the rest of the way down to Camp Righteous. Yes. So, for yeah. sake of the rations and water. Um, Does anybody yet have a way of creating food and water? I I can find so fresh water and food really. while I travel. Um, yeah, no, I'm... we can. We, we all have rain catchers, um, the... and we have a couple of days of buffer, right? So... Does everybody have a rain catcher now? Yeah, did uh, we buy we... one for everybody? I don't. I remember. thought everybody bought one. I don't uh... keep track of the group stuff. Hold on, let me think. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, it, do you need... It's like, the rain catchers do what? They give you, like, enough for, like, one thing a day or something? Like, uh, I believe it's two gallons or so. Oh, I, I think it's enough to fill up two water skins a day. Is it two oh. gallons or two water skins? Because the water I, skins are I not think, a gallon. question Actually, is how many I days... Well, because the question if, is how how many days use you can get out of them, you know, right? I because guess it I depends think on how long it rains and how heavy. Yeah, they so. can hold up to eight gallons. They will catch two gallons of water per inch of rainfall. Oh, okay. So the, yeah, I don't I don't think everyone needed one then. If we were talking about it like that, because I don't think we needed everyone. Hold on, I don't. But I, everybody was, needs was two gallons a day. But it can hold up to eight. Yes. What holds up to eight? The, the rain catcher. The water, the, the rain catcher. It can I thought the catcher, eight. okay, the catcher includes like a, a barrel-like thing? Right, it doesn't include like, a, that's what it holds it in, right? The small barrel or eight something? Eight gallons is a lot. Eight gallons sounds like an awful lot to me. I mean, can you imagine having to lug two three-gallon paint jugs around with you everywhere. That's a lot of water, I think. Yeah, it, you're not going to carry it full. Basically, the wooden frame, you lay the tarp in there, and it collects the water into the tarp. So everybody would have... Uh, you have up, access to up to eight, eight gallons, assuming it rains four inches. And okay, yeah, okay. So it collects it up, up to eight and gallons, it. and then we fill our rash, and then we fill up our... Or, right. Yeah. You, okay. Then we fill, fill up, up our, our water skins with it skins. in the morning, and it should, assuming that we get enough rain overnight or whatever time period it is, then we should have enough for the day, basically. Yeah. I was under okay. the impression it was raining a lot. Though. It does rain a lot. 
Okay. But not always, so that's why I wanted to check. I, I would mean, imagine we don't need more than one, maybe two of these for the people that we had, the number of people that we had. Does it rain a couple times a day or like once? I mean, what's a lot? Um, sometimes it rains most of the day. Sometimes it rains all day, but it never actually gets down to the ground. Okay. We get like drips and stuff and that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes yeah. it's very humid and misty, but not actually wet. Well, I have one water skin uh, as a buffer, and I'm assuming I top it off every time we use the rain catcher. Yeah, I think that's what we would do. Cause, uh, how much does a water skin hold? Uh, four pints. I just looked it up. Four pints? Oh, so, so, so half, half a, a gallon. Of water? Okay, so if we were, oh we'd have to fill it four times, basically, and drink it four times to basically get enough water for the day, officially. Yeah. Unreasonable. Um, and I would imagine that the 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 uh, the barrel, if we had extra, we would be able to lug it around with say like two or three extra gallons with not without too much trouble. Eight would be probably problematic. I would well, it's not a barrel exactly. It's a frame oh. that you think of like. Oh, a, it's a, a tarps. A wooden so the water box gets outline. caught in the tarp. Yeah. Oh, so we wouldn't be able to hold it. We have to fill up our. So any lost any water lost is lost at that point. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you could probably, between two people, carry this frame around, but the awkwardness of it would actually take more than one person. Right. Okay, now I understand. Um, yeah, well, uh, I would assume then that anytime we get a, even a whiff of a bit of rain, we would go ahead and set it up, stop for a few minutes, let it fill up, and then fill up our water skins, and then, and then, and then move on. I, 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 don't, I don't see any reason not to do that. So... Um, if it looks like a bit of a dry spell, then we'll just ration our water, you know? Okay. To, to be sim to even simplify it further, Joe, um, even if it doesn't make it all the way down to the forest floor as rain, uh, is it possible to uh, use forage uh, survival to find, you know, puddles of, of fresh rainwater and stuff? Um, you can find puddles of water, but Azaka advises against drinking any standing water. Like even ones that are like caught by leaves and, and things. She advises against drinking standing water. Whether you want to or not, that's up to you. Hmm. Could be insects and stuff get there quickly and lay the eggs and stuff. Like I don't know. those giant mosquito things that tried to eat us. I don't know if they lay their eggs in water, uh, but <laughs> I can tell you that something tried to make me not feel well when I fell in the water. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll 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 just ration. If it look, feels like it's a bit drier than normal, we'll ration the water a bit, and we'll over. We, you know, if it's very very rainy, then we'll we'll make sure we stop several times and and refill at that point. So yeah. we'll uh, hopefully hopefully we don't get two or three days of dryness. And if we do, then oh, then it, we would be concerned. No, we don't. Because uh, I mean, even one day of where we not get enough water, I can do purify food. And Oh, right. You can purify it, right? So we can yeah. drink the water if he purifies it, right? Correct. So yes. I, we can take the river okay. water and stuff and I can purify Okay, cool. So All it's... right. So at worst case scenario, if it's really dry, then we do that. So yeah, we'll use the rain tractor. Just about how close to the edge we are. Of doing right, right. So Joe, it... Joe, just let me know if we get close to that. Okay. Would that be reasonable? Oh, yeah. I, can, I can learn that spell, I believe. Oh, I can do... Yeah, I can do a, a every long rest. I can change my spells around. So first level, I can just swap in purify. Right. So I basically, mean, all, we I'm hit not a dry using... spell, then he can just memorize it the next day. So yeah. if we hit a dry spell where we're getting really low, and it doesn't look like there's any rain or anything overnight. Then he could just memorize it the next morning, and we'll be. Yeah, I was just saying we could switch it off from day to day. Oh, day. I see. If you learn it, yeah, that's fine too. How, um, how much can you purify with that? Oh, quite a bit. It's like... Uh, like all non-magical food and drink within a five-foot radius sphere yeah. centered oh, on a oh. point of your choice within it's range is purified. And so basically we find like a small pond, drink. purify it, and then we can drink out of it. Okay, got it. Yeah, and as long as it's purified, she doesn't seem to think there would be a problem. 
Okay, yeah. So maybe we'll just like you know we'll pull some of it out, dump it, and then have it all purified in that point. So we'll be fine. All right, all right. So that that would be I'll our go plan. Go ahead and just whenever. have it prepared because I hardly ever cast spells. So I always use them for my smites. Ah, so you could just have it prepared, anyways. Okay, fair. Okay, that's that makes things easier. So you camp. Hi, Owen. You camped uh, at the base, kind of not right at the base, but a, a ways out a little bit for that night, or the rest of that night. So, if you get a late start, you could have the rest. It shouldn't affect, it shouldn't cut into travel time at all. Everybody should be on the map page. So on the first day, who is helping Azaka navigate, or who is she helping navigate? Uh, usually it was Carlton, wasn't it? Yeah, but... I can do it too. I mean, okay. I got a survival. So Twillin is helping. The first day, she seems to, you know, you cross the river and start heading northwest. And it is raining. Yeah. Okay. All day. And... Uh, during the day... You know, she she has her mask put away now. She doesn't keep it out. She doesn't wear it. It's actually sewed in her pack. Again, I want to thank you for retrieving this. It's no problem at all. Thank you for uh, guiding us. Are there any ceremonies you use with it? Like, is it like a ritual, like a family tradition or something? It is an heirloom. Uh, I don't recall any rituals. I haven't spoken to my parents in a while. I was just wondering if you use it like, 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 I don't know, dancing around in the full moon or something. Or she gives you a, a strange look. Is this a? What? I'm a shape thing? changer. No, I'm a shape changer. I see. It's a, cat, it's a cat mask, so I thought maybe, I don't know. And it's magic, so maybe it has some sort of ritualistic magical property. It is magical? Yeah. Uh, yes, it did. Uh, I didn't um, study it closely, but it does, it does uh, have a, a bit of a magical aura around it. I did not know this. Could be what got their attention, or just because who knows? They didn't. They didn't seem to know its importance. Uh, where it was at, I believe it was kind of shoved with others. It was in one of the chests. Yeah, it was. In, yeah, it was just sort of loot. It looked like they didn't seem to like have it out, and and they didn't seem to be using it. They so. were not dancing right. around in the moonlight. No, <laughs> no, they were well, not. It was not moonlight, so. We should make... We should make decent time. And that day passes uneventfully. Uh, what is the general watch order at night? Um, sort of the weakest with the strongest sort of idea, I would assume. Um, we could stick a perception, percep really perceptive person with not so perceptive person, so they they tie. It. So I would imagine the rogue would be separated with somebody. Um, with the druid seems to be the more perceptive one. Uh, I don't know who else would have a good. Uh, would be very perceptive. Uh, we want one forest gnome on on different ships. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, be. Because, I wouldn't be with that. Yeah, because we can talk to small critters and and you know see if like anything's happening. Yeah. So um, keeping us split up is a good idea. That's fine. Otherwise, it yeah. doesn't matter when when Twilling goes. He he doesn't mind watching. Yeah, I just want you with somebody because you're a little bit better with the um, than others. 
I basically want you with a weaker link kind of thing so that we're not stacking one watch with really perceptive people and then the next watch with nobody who could see anything. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead and arrange some shifts for us. Yeah. So um, take whatever anybody gives me. Yeah. Um, I, I, how about I stick you with the paladin? And okay. um, I'll stay with the rogue and then uh, we'll put the other. What is it the other two together since they're not here? Paladin. Well, who's not going to be here today, okay. actually? Mm-hmm. Years uh, and Malwin are not going to be here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Malwin called out to you? Yeah, he let us know at the end of last week that he wouldn't be here. Oh, so wait, who are we waiting on then? We're waiting on... Um, Matt Fixer, mm-hmm. the Warforged. Yeah. Okay. Uh, assume I'm with Fixer then, and then we'll put the other two. The the we'll put them in their own little group. Well, <laughs> Fixer technically doesn't can always be on watch. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, he doesn't sleep. But but I'll officially be with. And then uh, I'll put the other two together since they're not here. It works out pretty well. So is Nexus and Fixer first? Um. No, I'll put I'll put the I'll put the other two first and we'll be in the middle. Uh, I'll take uh last shift if possible. Oh, you want last? Um sure. You know what? Why yeah, don't you Yeah, because eight hours gives me the chance to recover spells. Even though I don't How about this? I you know what? I, I have a better <laughs> idea. Me and Fixer will take the first watch and then these two will take the last and we'll put the other two. I'll put the rogue in the middle. Okay, who's taking first? Uh, that would be me and Fixer. All right. And, and then the cleric and the and the uh, rogue, and then the, the druid and the paladin. Do you want Azaka to take a watch at all? Um, sure. Um, actually, she can. She can take the first watch with us, and then she can rest. We'll do it that way. All right. So third watch then is Twillin and Thrak. And Fixer. Yeah, Fixer's in all the watches. All right, I put that down in the character sheet section. That way, if it needs to change at all, you guys can change it. What is Nexus's passive perception? Uh, my passive perception is a 12. Is not the most perceptive. Okay. Let me see if I can figure out what Fixer's passive is. Oh, wait, I can do it straight from the uh, overlay. It should be in DD Beyond, right? Yeah, I can just use the overlay on Twitch to bring it up. That way I don't have to find a browser or anything. All right. So as your watch is over and you're getting ready to wake up the next pair, you notice that Azaka is not around. And you don't never saw her leave. Uh, um, I'm saying I'm assuming Fixer didn't. Fixer okay. didn't either. I uh, I will actually go and wake up. Uh, Twillin. 
we, have a, we, we might have a. Hmm? Our, our guide is gone. Uh, good. Like gone. Is it good. No, it's not good. I I don't know where she's. At. Uh, I... well, did somebody leave a gemstone in her place? <laughs> I, I, I look where I last saw her. I'll put it that way. Go, uh, let me go, let me go look where I last. Saw her. There is no gemstone. Um, her bedroll is out and prepared. Okay. Wait, um, that's odd. Okay. Uh, well, let's look around and see if she like went to the bathroom or something. Twillin reluctantly gets up and oh, uh, what would be a good. Maybe a good bee swarm for searching would be um, something that could sniff. Uh, um, I, you know, I, I haven't used it yet. I will look around for some forest quitter, critters to see if they saw. Her. Um, roll me a perception check. Ooh, hey, look at that. 22. All right. A wolf, I guess. Might be possible. Let me see what you find. Um, around the jungle. What is the restriction on your language? What do you mean that for the first thing? Yeah, what can you speak to? I think it's just small critters. If you remember. Beasts? Small beasts? Yeah. That yeah, beast. Small of the beast category. Yeah, small or smaller beasts is what it says. Okay. And find a small... Oh, okay, this one's tiny. You happen to find a snake that is uh, coiled mm, up in a tree not too far away. It looks as though it's been watching you all. All right. Um, I will. I will point to the place where I saw her last, and uh, you know, uh, did you see a woman? Walk away. Let me see what its passive perception is. What is a woman? Um, the I'm another bigger. person. A person like me with longer, well, well bigger. it's me, but bigger. She, she, she was. Like a very tall person. She was there sitting on this rock or something. And, uh, and now she's not. Did you see? It kind of swivels its head over to the camp. Uh, there. Are many others and bigger. Yes, but she was awake. Others were asleep. It was me, the small, oh. uh, him sitting over there, and then girl awake. So no. those they are all sleeping. Right, right. But earlier there was somebody awake. I did not see anybody else. Hmm. 
no, nobody but me and Tim. Pointing to fix her. Yes, just you. I see. She is very good. Thank you. Did you happen to remember to tag her? Wait, I tagged everybody. You yeah, but I meant like your everybody. compass. No, I couldn't have. You're right. Well, let me let me see if I can center down. Uh, Twillin turns into a panther. Okay. And uses keen smell to see if he can detect her scent. He goes around like the outside of the camp, see where she might have gone. Keen smell gives you advantage on perception checks that rely on smell. Okay. And it has a perception of plus four. So plus four with advantage. Go ahead and roll it. Okay. Ah, oh, it's easier just to type it in. Picture has arrived. Welcome. We... Did you oh, see the note picture. about leveling up? Yes. Okay. After this, we will get what you gained. A 19. All right, a 19. Yeah, we have to add him to the call. Yeah. That I can do. So, so fixer, a, a quick update. We we lost our our, our guide. Like oh, literally yeah, just for, now. <laughs> first, first watch, she suddenly disappeared. Oh. I have a really bad suspicion. Yeah, you think that her? mask had something to do with it? Yeah, that, that she got yeah. her mask and she doesn't. Now she wants to get it back home. She could have just. Either that or she got curious and put it on. Oh, I, got, I, got, think about I got this impression the whole time she's had it, she never actually put it on. It's just an heirloom, right? So it's just the sort of thing that you have on your shelf. And we told her it was magical. Oh. <laughs> All right. The giant, so the you giant cat god came and took her. Smell a faint trace of her scent. And it does lead out um, into the jungle. We lost Joe, your we voice. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Joe. We lost you again. And we can see A1 again. <laughs> you can't hear me at all. Well, well now we can. You. Now we can. Okay, this is so weird. Is it doing it again? I wonder if my key... Hi, Ewen. I wonder if my keyboard is dying so that my control button is... Your network signals got really flaky when it happened. Yeah, I noticed that too. Did they? Yep. My Discord signals or my v, my uh, video? The VC, the VC meter with the red, the bars turned red and orange and fluttered. So. Okay. We can still see you, but things got a little broken up. So maybe it was a network thing. It's being weird. Okay. So you... Oh, can't hear you. At all? Test? No, oh, now we can. We, test? I wonder yep, why now we can. We, all right, hold on, because I was moving a window around when that happened. You can hear me now, still? Yep. 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 Okay, I don't know what window I was organizing there, but that's weird. What was the name of that phone company that did those commercials with, like, can you hear me now? I think that was AT&T. Uh, that was in... actually Verizon. Oh, was it Verizon? Verizon. Yeah, it sounds like Verizon. Yeah, and the guy moved to Sprint and made the joke of it. Yes, oh, okay. yes, that's correct. Yes, I remember that too. 
so you catch a trace of her scent that leads out into the mm-hmm. jungle. Maybe about 40 yards or so. And then... Dead ends? Yeah. Okay. Turn back and call the others over. Hmm. Their smell Uh, went away here. Wow. That's awkward. When she left everything here, um, oh, can we look around for tracks or anything like that in this area? You can. Is that just, is that just perception? Yeah. Uh, it's perception to find them. It's survival to follow we'll them. Follow, right? I gotcha. Do you want all of us to roll, or just? Assist one person or what? Um, whoever's looking, somebody can oh. assist them. Yeah, maybe maybe somebody can uh, else can assist somebody else. Uh, what what a fix, what is a, a fixer? Somebody uh, assist uh, uh, assist the druid there. So uh, probably is a better chance. Yeah, okay. mine's only a, a plus three, so I'm assuming somebody probably better than me. It's higher than mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm plus three. Whoa. Oh, and and fixer, you're uh, you're uh, you have double mics on. Oh yeah, the VC. Your VC yeah, mic is better. still on. It's better. Okay. Yeah, we're good. I'm plus three too. So there's no matter. action to assist. You just help somebody, and then they get advantage. You want me to roll, or Matt? Do you want to roll? Um, now nah, we'll see. I'll just help you, so you get the advantage. Okay. Yeah, I think whoever, somebody that can see in the dark would be the better one to roll. Yeah, that's not me. <laughs> not it. <laughs> okay, did that roll? Yep. Ooh, 21. Nice. All right, so yes, you find tracks that seem to be uh, leading from the last place anybody remembers seeing her, you know, around the camp, kind of circled a perimeter slightly out of view from where those watching were looking and then leads out into the jungle. It was like she was avoiding being seen? I guess. Okay. And it goes to the place where I noticed the scent disappeared. And it goes to the place where you noticed the scent disappeared. Are there any other additional tracks? Here? In that area? Like, does it, does it, like, uh, can we see like something dragging her off or some craziness, or is there other tracks of another creature? Big reptilian claw print. Yeah, you know. <laughs> she get eaten by a dinosaur, you know. This would take another perception check. If you, why don't you do it this time, Matt? Somebody can assist. We can, we can sure. have light. Since we're not tracking. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I'm a city bot, not a nature bot, so I'm out of my element. So yeah, it seems to just <laughs> end here. Well, hey, go back to sleep and maybe she'll be here in the morning when she comes back. I don't Yeah. I don't know. Uh yeah, we'll we'll have to. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't look like there was any. There's. It doesn't look like there's a sign of a fight here. Like that should be more obvious, I would imagine, right? There does not seem to be any uh, signs of struggle here. No. Right. Okay. Okay. So she would be the type that would put up a fight if someone had something had taken her. So. Uh, I'm but she was going to was assume she us, left. So I don't know. Her. Yeah, but she was avoiding being seen leaving. So I don't know. We we don't know, and we don't know the area, so it's not like we would have an idea of what might be in the region. Correct. Okay. Well. So let's just go back to sleep and wake. See, hope she comes back. Yeah. If not, this will be in a very different type of travel. All right. I, I wake the other two up for their for their thing, and I and I. I... Okay. 
we 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 go back to our camp and finish playing Blue's Clues. Oh, uh, before we go back to sleep, is her mask still with her stuff, or is that gone? Her pack is there, and the mask is bundled up and wrapped up inside the pack. Oh. Okay. That's weird that she would have left that. Now that bothers me. Mm -hmm. We will see. All right, so the next watch, which would be Malwin Ears and Fixer, goes uneventfully. Twillin, Thrak, and Fixer are last watch. Okay. Uh, could I just... My Iron Defender actually has dark vision and has better perception than me. Can I just use my little bear bot? What is its or, passive perception? Uh, that's 14. That's 10 plus the number, right? Yeah. 14. And what is Thrax's passive perception? 12. Okay. And I can't You're see... You're relying on me. Yeah. The <laughs> robot... that apparently has dark vision, whereas I don't. Okay. Uh, however, the 12s and higher has it. Um, just before... Not just before dawn, but maybe a couple hours before dawn, she approaches again, walks up, um... Like, casually, like nothing happened. She kind of circles around the camp again, looking outward, carefully. And then she walks over to her bedroll. And kind of uh, ducks inside for a little bit. Okay. Look, she's uh, back. I think I'm more than uh, I think we should wait till the morning to ask her what in the world's going on. That way the people who noticed can ask her the question of how was it they got by them in the first place? Well, that's easy. It was not Good that hard to get by. <laughs> it's like asking Fixer, how did, or his ears, how did you sneak by us? No, you know, trust me, it's not that hard. So morning comes and preparations happen and I assume somebody gets food out for people. So remember to deduct a day of insect repellent if you have it and any food and or water as necessary. It did rain overnight. So this so is day seven? This is day seven. No, sorry. It was five days that night, six you travel. Yeah, so this is day seven. Uh, today is sunny with a little bit of rain. The rain clouds seem to have localized areas, so it doesn't rain much here. Okay. Right where we're camped, or in, um, in... as you're traveling, it's not raining on you. Okay. And while we're at there, let's see what did Fixer. Why don't you introduce yourself, also, and who you play, and what you gained at level four? I'm Matt. I play a. Warforged Artificer, and at the level up, I just decided just to raise the intelligence, so I have a bonus of plus four, and I got a new infusion, which is the Amenity Handed Pouch. So everybody has a pouch that shares a space, so you can easily transfer items back and forth. This is so awesome! <laughs> I, Twillin is going to be putting things like frogs and snakes and scorpions <laughs> in it. 
This is awesome. So much fun. Is the gnome's animal speech uh, an always-on thing? Yeah, it's an innate ability for four okay. times. The snake doesn't seem to mind the pouch. The frog doesn't like it. <laughs> All the better. But yeah, during the day's travel, um, she's leading you on, you know, avoiding places to, to travel, pointing out places that you should walk, you know, like nothing happened. So I don't know if anybody else wants to bring it up, but she doesn't. Um, I will. Um, not to be nosy, uh, but last night you kind of disappeared on us for a little while and we got a little worried. I was always nearby. Oh. Uh, okay. You're just watching, you were more comfortable watching from afar? Something like that. Hmm. All right. just, just at least let me go to let me know so you're not like, so I know that you're not, I'm not like, uh, you know, you're not lost. Well, you probably won't get lost, but I didn't. I didn't see any signs of a struggle, so I assumed you were okay, but if, it's still nice to know. If there is trouble, you will know. It's fair enough. All right, so that day also passes uneventfully. When you wake up for the um, that night, she will tap you on the shoulder and say that she not to worry about her. Let's put it that way. Okay. I will trust you. And she is again back a few hours before morning. Uh, when everybody wakes up that more that morning, it is heavily misted. Visibility is very short, uh, out to 15 feet. Past that, it's very hard to see anything except shadowy shapes of anything uh, larger than medium-sized. Mm. And this day, you should be reaching the river, but you don't. About uh. midday... You hear them before you see them because of the, the mist, and then you start to see shapes out in the, um, kind of in the direction you're going of, uh, let's see if I have a picture here. It's a quadruped, quadrupedal animal. It's large. It has a somewhat long neck and a long tail. And Azaka stops as soon as she notices it, and you hear it. Uh, this bad? Mm, they are dinosaurs of some kind, I think. I don't uh -huh. know if they are hostile. Hmm. Um, we should let them, uh, are they coming toward? From what you can tell, they are scattered in front of you. Oh, okay. But, well, let's uh, proceed carefully. Yeah, let's just go slowly. Darn it, ears, why aren't you here? This is your, this is, this is why we I have. Guess, is insight? Applicable to find out whether or not they turn threatening, or they look like they're worried or something. Or um, if you are close enough to them, yes. Okay. So everybody's kind of proceeding slowly. Yeah. Yes. 
All right. Carrying now, our if canoes. She, if she wants to just come to a dead stop and let them go by, I'm perfectly okay with that, too. <laughs> they're scattered out in front of us. Yeah, there are multiples of them. Yeah, they don't passing. seem to be moving. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I misunderstood. <laughs> so we carry our canoes amongst the dinosaurs. Yeah, they could just be grazing. Maybe they're, you know, plant eating. Uh, as we get closer, can we can we gauge their size at least? They are large. They yeah. are. Um, you have a druid. Oh no! Also, you haven't seen dinosaurs all that often on the mainland either. But when you can actually get a good view of them, and that means getting within twenty feet of some of the big ones, they are hadrosaurs. Well, do they look like? Do they look like any of the dinosaurs we damn near got ran over? Yeah, one no. of the racers. No, you said a hadrosaur. Hadrosaurus. Hadrosaurus. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that one. Nope. <laughs> I'll probably see it and be like, oh, it's that one, but I, I, I just don't recognize the name. No, no, I, I remember the dinosaurs a... quite well, because I remember getting ran over. <laughs> can we can we use, like, nature or whatnot to tell if they're, like, herbivores or Yeah, are they just like eating that? grass and other trees and stuff like that? We should be able to tell by that. I mean... Yeah, so like, you don't even need to roll nature because you can see them eating from the trees and stuff. Okay. So, um, uh, so we I just have, have to be a, careful. Uh, no, I don't have a picture. Oh, man. So are they eating uh, the trees themselves? Or are they eating like no leaves off the trees? Well, as long as our cleric didn't try to convert them, we're okay. <laughs> um, let's Is give them a. Let's give them a wide berth, as we don't Except wish Except for feel... Twillin. Yeah. Let's give them a wide berth, so we, they don't Except feel threatened. Um, <laughs> we do not want to, like, accidentally stumble into, like, a nest or something of that nature. There um, are, as you pass, um, you can see clearly 15 feet away, shadowy up to 30 feet away. At least a dozen of them that you are walking by, and they seem to mostly ignore you until you get within a uh, start to approach a pair of them that look at you and start to make uh, growling noises. And at that point, you can see three young kind of between the two of them behind them. All right, I'll slowly back up. Is there anything special about the trees they're eating? No, not really. Okay. So, like, there's no, like, particular fruit or a type of tree that they seem to prefer that is unusual for the area. Nothing? No. I just had this image of twilling, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, and then, like, grabbing, like, a branch off of a tree and then, like, trying to go close to one and feed. (sighs) Oh, well. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah, we just back up anytime we get yeah. to that. You know, if we ever see uh, them growling, we stop and we slowly back up. Okay. It just seems to be that one unit, I guess, with the three young. All the other ones don't mind you passing by them. They kind of uh, lean down and sniff at you as you pass nearby, but they don't bother you. As we're leaving, Twilin remarks. Hey, do you think one of the little ones would fit in the pouch? No. No. Don't no. even try. <laughs> no. Azaka tilts her head. Uh, Ifan in Port Nanzaru would pay dearly if you could get one to him. Yes, but... What? What? <laughs> Twillin is interesting. If if you try to put one in a pouch, I will tell you now, I don't have to outrun them. I merely have to outrun you. <laughs> um, but but if agreed. He, is it if he's in that pouch, he's in every pouch, isn't he? So Yeah, well, that's it.
So everybody would have one of them in there. A big yes. <laughs> Great. We've it's created Schrodinger's couch. Yeah, that's exactly. So yeah, at the end of the eighth day, Azaka looks a little flustered. We should have reached the river by now. Do we even hear the river? No. Are we? Did we get? Um, are we going in the right direction? Who is able Hard to, to tell, tell huh? in this mist? We should mm -hmm. camp. Yeah, until we get our bearings. Yes. I can detect magic for the next day. Sorry, detect weather. If you need me to see whether or not this mist will last. No, it might actually be helpful. So at least we know what we're getting into tomorrow. I do the druid craft thing. It's a cantrip. Do do do. I know the weather. Darn druids replacing meteorologists already. <laughs> I know. What's the yeah? We're bastards. Well, th uh, think about how the medicine system works around here. Yeah. It's just uh, it it detects the weather in my location for the next twenty four hours. Doesn't say there's any like uh, mischance yeah. or anything. But if you want to make me roll a perception test, no. Uh, all right. So you cast detect well druidcraft, and the the signs that you get indicate that it's going to be sunny and dry in your location. Okay. Is there uh, anything so, like tall to get to the top of? Maybe to see later on, like if we can see the river. No, no rain for the next day here. Are we in the right mm -hmm. light, right place? I mean, do we get off course? Maybe. Um, climbing. Yeah, actually. Can, Tolan, can you turn to something to climb and see how tall you can get up there? A squirrel or something? And uh, see if you climb can up get what? up tall. The trees. And see if you can see the river from... How tall are the trees, Joe? Varying heights. Is there one that looks like it will be pretty tall that really goes ones? above... Oh, we're, we're where in the mist. You, yeah, That's where right. you are, you can see uh, 15 feet clearly, and then a few shadowy shapes that extend to about 30 feet up. Okay, but let me Yeah, clarify. but I can tell, I can tell our... from the girth of the trunks, right? There you I'll go. Yeah, we want trunk. a nice thick tree. Roll. Yes, you can find thicker trees that should be tall enough, you think. Okay. Turn Just... into a giant wolf spider and... Okay. Scamper up. Yeah, climb up a tree. You are surrounded by jungle. Keep going until I get to the top? Or no, it's you're at the top. Awkward? You can look around. You oh, are surrounded okay. by jungle. Oh. oh. Can I see so over we... the mist at all? Uh, up here? Let me see. I'll give you... Like, a... We're looking for the river, right? And and if I can get landmarks, I can come down and report them. I mean, for all we know, we're going in circles. And we, like, the river's, like, you know, two miles away. Roll me a perception check. Okay. And 11. Not that great. Well, unless they were heading, you know, I was thinking those big dinosaurs would have left a pretty clear path of their passage, wouldn't they? So if they were coming from the direction of the river we're going to, we could have just followed that, couldn't we? I don't think they were going anywhere. What? Right. Yeah, yeah but like... they didn't just randomly appear there. They had to get there somehow. <laughs> they were grazing on those trees. Um... I don't know if they had any like 
destination of mine, but they were obviously nesting their young right there. Do you yeah, yeah. want to risk that they weren't coming from the river Tyreki? That's that's why I was trying to figure out as if we could determine which direction they came from. But With this mist, I do not know where we are. It is hard to tell where they came from. Uh, okay, so you can you do get over uh, some of the mist, and the mist is localized to a few square miles, right? Like twenty to thirty okay. mile area. Um, you can see jungle around you. You don't really see the river. You think that if you look northward, uh, you can see ocean, maybe. You can see mountains northwestish. Okay. Okay. Mountains. Way in the distance, right? Uh, you can see Firefinger southeast of you. Firefinger okay. southeast. Okay. But you know, it should be pretty much southeast of you anyway. Right. Right. Uh... I'm just saying, if it was, like, you know, northeast east of us, then we're clearly, we're like, wait, what? Where are we? Is, yeah. is there any other, like, uh, northeast or southwest landmark? Not that you can see with the 11, no. Okay. Come back down. Turn back into a no. Um, okay, so I saw Firefinger to the southeast, which is where it should be. Uh, to the northwest, I saw ocean and mountains. Um, I I didn't see any river. Um, if we're supposed to have already been at the river, uh, did, I don't know, somebody take the river? Uh, no, with this mist, you probably wouldn't be able to see down into anything anyways. I didn't think about that. Because I'm assuming you when you looked like up, you saw... Well, no, you saw Firefinger. Did you see the River Tariki? Because it was right next to Firefinger. Oh. Right. So it's, uh, it's the a mist. storm forest in the, jungle. in the mist. Yeah. Okay. Besides, if the river was missing, we'd at least stumbled over the hole, right? But wait, at least he was up there enough to get a, a general direction. If we know where Firefinger is, we at least have a pretty good idea of which direction we should be going. Mm hmm. Northwest. Right. I mean, like now that he's down, could he? Could you maybe have a better directional sense of where we're going? Do we seem lost, or, or we seem to be going in the right direction? Uh, we should have the sun, reached. Right? We should have reached the river already, so we might have. Where's your compass a located on? Uh, what what? Oh, compass? What's your compass fixated on? Wait, do we have a compass? Your magic, magic compass. compass. Are you using it for oh, our that. direction and helping us? Um, no, it's it's fixated on the city, right? That's what we still have that on. I, I don't and know so if that resets or port, anything. Port, uh, nah, right? So the port is where I had that. Yep, yeah, so that's mostly north. Slightly, you know, you can find the direction. Yeah. Um, no, okay. Well, I mean, that's not going to help us in general going uh, oh, west. Help us keep going in the direction we need to go, right? Uh, unless we're like, there's like some sort of trap that keeps us from progressing. Oh, I see I what you're saying. So yeah. as long as it's pointing north, we know that's north, we could technically use it to go west. Yeah, we're not going like in circle because we have that compass, right? If okay, it. okay, okay. Well, true. Let's uh, we'll we'll use the compass a little bit more, especially in the mist, if we need to. At the very least, we know that we don't accidentally turn north for too lo much too long of a period, or anything like that. You know. Yeah, it, it's like something is stopping us from. I mean, I don't usually get lost, right? And we should have been to the other river by. Now. So yeah. it's sort of like I don't know either this mist or the weird weather here is some sort of indicator of some sort of, I don't know, magical effect? Well, it's supposed what, to be sunny tomorrow, magic? so... We could always look up again and tomorrow. 
Um, um, see if the I miss clears yeah, out. Yeah, she just wants to camp now. Sure. So uh, no, yeah. Tomorrow. Why not? I, I will just cast the tech magic on the mist. Is it a magical mist? No. Uh, Azaka walks over to Twillin and kind of squats down, since you're a gnome. You are unable uh-huh. to be lost. I'm usually good at uh, intuitively remembering landmarks as I go places and being able to find my way back and through. I've wandered all over so many places. I just it's habit. He's just new to this place, so yeah, out of character. I've got that like yeah. outlander feet. But uh, so I'm I'm actually at this point favoring heading back to the river because if we're trapped here for a couple of days, purify food and drink is not going to help us. Um, we're going to need access to water eventually, and it looks like it's not going to rain here. And if this sort of effect is, you know, something that we're running into and, and it's going to persist, we're going to have problems. So I would recommend trying back to go to the river, trying to go back to the river. The the river Tariki. Yeah. We lose a lot of time if we do that. Uh, you got somewhere else to be? It, it is possible, oh. but also the the way... Um, and she's been traveling this a while. You're not always going in a straight line. Sometimes you have to veer and circle around. You know, small yeah. gorges in the land and stuff like that. So you're never going to just be going in one direction. Uh, mm-hmm. We could go back to the river, but there is no guarantee that... This may not happen again. Even trying to find that river might be difficult, is what you're saying. Uh, it is possible, yes. The she only kind of... good thing, the only good thing about the river Tariki is we can see Firefinger from the top of the trees, so at least we can kind of gauge by that. Um, we don't have much going the other direction. Um, Isn't there a mountain line in that direction? Wait, did you see mountains in that direction in the west? Far to the northwest. Oh, okay, okay. So you saw the these mountains up here. That that's what it, we're not that, like that. against the mountains or anything. I mean, we'd be able no, to no, see no. it fairly. Um, no, but no, you're no. saying a large structure that doesn't move. That's fire finger. That mountains are large structures that don't move. <laughs> Pick a peak uh, and right. stick with it. You know what? I'm <laughs> no. I, 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 our problem I is not direction. Right. Um, I don't. I don't think we need to go back. I think we're okay. We're, let's fill up on the on the water that we have. The, um, we can't we'll fill ration up water. For, we'll just ration water then for the next couple of days until we find water. I'm in favor of going back, but I've been wrong before. As I said, let's just wait till tomorrow when the weather clears and maybe we can get our bearings a little bit better at that point. So this yes. weather, my weather detection says it's going to be the same. No, you didn't say it was going to be misty and... and oh, you mean the mist. Gonna, I, I yeah. can't tell, I guess. It yeah, could be. so we will see how the mist goes tomorrow. Um, if it's cleared up, then we should be able to travel just fine. Uh, yes, it will be hot, so we will be rationing our water um, until we can get more rain or we, we hit the river, whichever one works. If we find a pond or something of that nature that we can purify, then we will we will take advantage of it. Okay. Well, so we are on I'll half go with the group. I'm, we are I'm on half water. We are, we'll be on half water tomorrow. Is that understood? That's All the right. plan. Yep. Unless we find water. Hey. Yeah. Unless we find water, <laughs> yes. All right. So keeping this... So keeping the same watch order, the night passes uneventfully. And In the morning, Joe, I prepare create uh, or destroy water. Okay. I swap out entangle for it. Oh, so you can create water. 
I can, but it's only 10 gallons. Okay. Okay. So it's more like an emergency fund. Okay. Yep. And I try it as soon as I can in the morning. All right. So you're preparing. Uh, people are kind of getting up and. How's the weather? Getting ready to stuff. It is. Uh, the mist is faded. It is. Looks like it's sunny in your area. It looks as though it may be raining in areas around you. But not on us. But not on you. And then. Uh, passive perception checks? What? What are, you want check? passive, what are passive perception numbers? Oh, I'm 18. So I'm probably fairly high. Yeah. 13 for me, 14 for the bear. Uh, okay, 18. Twillin, you are not surprised. <gasps> As... Oh, let me fix this. Since it is daytime. Um. Let me bring your tokens over. Wouldn't it be great to have a dinosaur in your pocket? <laughs> that would just be like the most awesome thing ever. Just imagine the first person who tries to pick a pocket. I believe it works just like, or I think it's supposed to work just like a bag of holding. I think. It's the port of Somehow. Bag of... Yeah. yeah. It's Somehow one interdimensional space. And apparently has a range of 100 miles. So as long as you're within 100 miles of somebody off the pouch, you can share stuff. Outside of 100 miles, it just won't open? Or you just, it won't, it'll probably just act just like a regular pouch. Oh, okay. Or maybe it just doesn't work. It doesn't really stay. It just says it operates as long as it's within 100 miles of another one. Otherwise, oh, otherwise the pouch is otherwise empty and won't accept any contents. All right. So, Twillin, you are not surprised as uh, from... The trees, as you are there preparing your your spell, a giant snake seems to leap out of the tree at you, hungrily. Okay. Everybody else is surprised. So, initiatives? I select my token. Oh, right. Go to the other tab, click initiative. Mm. Roll it. Oh, I continue to get crappy initiative. Good job. Yeah, we've been really horrible with initiative in this game so far. Last week was just... Ugh. I'm going 
Wow. On the flip side, I've had a couple good rolls so far. You're so going really first. Sure <laughs> that, that never happens. Actually, Twillon's going first because he's the only one. No, I'm an eight. Surprised. Yes, oh, but yeah, you'll go before good. the rest of us because we're all surprised. Yeah. Yay! Sick. And you go before the snake. So you go as it's uh, jumping down. You react to it. Okay. It looks um, as though it's going to try to bite you. Um. Uh, what's the? Try to remember the. I turn into a brown bear. That's my action. I believe that takes. Roar at it. Okay. It is still going to bite, try to bite you as a bear. He's not afraid of the bear. It's not afraid of a bear. It is a medium beast. What is the bear's armor class? An 11. Uh, I rolled a 15. Okay. All right, so... Seven damage plus four poison damage. And roll a okay. constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, looks like it's plus three in this one. Ten. Probably failed. Ten fails. I am poisoned. So you take another nine poison damage. Okay. But it does not give you the poisoned condition, no. Oh, good. Okay. All right, so Azaka... Twenty total. Um, as close as it is to you, she's going to let you deal with it. I think. Taban is over packing up his stuff, so he stands up and bear, bear. And he draws his weapon and looks like he is setting himself to receive a charge from a bear. Because he didn't notice you change. Uh, what did I miss? Oh. I did miss this. Okay. Actually, I don't think I had my token selected when I rolled initiative. Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. What'd you roll? Nine. All right, so this is not a surprise because alerted to the first one. Uh, jumping out from another nearby tree. Is another snake that jumps at Nexus. No. And it does, it leaps out of the tree. It propels itself from the top of the tree. What is Nexus's AC? Probably higher than a 10? Yes, 14. All right. So that's when Taban reacts. Uh, Fixer, you're up. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to ready my crossbow. And, or no, we're all surprised. You can act now. Oh. Uh, then I'm going to attempt to shoot the one that's over by Nexus. 
Did I not select it? No. Fifteen hits. No, I think that was damage. Yeah, it just rolled damage for some reason. Try that again. Don't know why I did that. There we go. All right, 17 hits. And for 10 damage. All right. Your crossbow bolt goes slashing into it and angers it. <laughs> Thrak, you're up. Thrak? Your turn. Oh, sorry. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> I was zoomed in too far. I couldn't see anything. Uh, I guess I will be taking a uh, swing at the creature across from... Uh, is that our sorcerer next to me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a whack at the one right there in the problem. Okay. No one cares about Twillin, just handling it all. Him. Well, if I move, I provoke an attack of opportunity, so... Taban cares about disengage. Twillin. Taban's going to go kill that bear that's eating Twillin. <laughs> no, i got to fix that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Almost a crit. So that'll be 18 points of damage. All right, you cleanly slice the snake in half. <laughs> now there are two I, snakes. My, my bonus action was to turn my sword on. So Wait, what? Now I said are... my bonus action. No, no. He, he said there are two snakes. Wait, did now it, there did are you... two snakes. Oh. But they are two. Oh half yeah, uh, the front half and oh. back half. <laughs> okay. I was like, I was like, I was like, if you're going like Hydra Snake on me, I'll be like, no. All right, Twillin, you're up. Okay, I get two attacks: one with bite, one with claw. So one d twenty plus five. Okay, here's the bite. Uh, Sixteen to hit. That hits. One d eight plus four. For 11 points of damage? All right. For the claw? You don't need to claw it. Just biting it and oh. thrashing it, it goes limp on you. Mm. Uh, mm. Annoying snakes. Twillin, are you... Twillin's too big to talk to as an animal. <sighs> well, I mean, he's too big to talk to you. You can yes. talk to him. Hmm. Okay. You'll take care of yourself if you need to, I assume, right? Yeah, so let's watch out for these snakes. Gotta love the jungle. Let's pack up camp and get moving. The bear looks around. Hope there's no more. There doesn't seem yeah. to be any more. Okay. Twill will turn back then. What, you guys don't want to eat the snakes? Oh, uh, I suppose uh, better than rations. I uh, will look at Zaka. Yeah, we did. Uh, I'm assuming we can eat these snakes. Ours is already cooked. If snake doesn't bother you. Good. We have breakfast. 
<laughs> They're poisonous, so avoid the fang. Yeah. Uh, and I think I was going to cast Create Water, right? Yes. So try to cast it. Do you have containers? Actually, you can probably cast it into one of the rain catchers. Yeah, that's what yep. I was thinking. And all the water skins. We have pockets. No. <laughs> the bag of holding. <laughs> we throw the water in the bag of holding and we just share it. Everyone has I could put cup. fish in it then. Oh my god. An octopus. Uh, uh, so oh our, your bag of holding is now turned into a fish tank. Good job. It's a good thing that the stuff in there um, won't get wet because there's a lot of valuable tools in that bag. <laughs> <laughs> wet valuable tools. All right, packing up camp. So we, Did it work? We, the spell work? Yes, it works. I was worried about that. Okay, I feel better about proceeding onward then. All right, so we will fully load up on our on our wa- fill up our water skins. Uh, make sure those are full before we leave. Uh, we eat the snakes so we don't have to use rations. Fried snake. Yes. And with the clearing, with it being clearing, uh, we should hopefully be able to uh, get back on track. Hopefully. Hopefully. Jungle with no rain. Around noon. It is raining again. Awesome. We're out of the dry spot. Yeah, there's basically a 30% chance of you being dry at any given area. (laughs) Ah. But you are out of the dry spot. Uh, However, due to some fallen trees and other random terrain, you still aren't sure where you're at. Using your magical compass, though, you're pretty sure you you are going in the right direction. So you're not sure how far off track you were. But we are at least heading westward. Yep, you seem to be at least heading westward. Okay. More northwestward. Kind of in that direction over there. Right. We, I just don't want to go be going straight north. Because <laughs> that would be... Oh, and we lost your video there. Mine? Yes, this is mm-hmm. nice. this lost video feed. Uh, okay. Actually, I will be right back. Better? Looks better on my end. Seems to be working. Okay. Seems I have a very touchy wire, or my USB hub is very touchy, one or the other. I would suspect the hub. Probably. I need to get a new one. Alright. So, the fourth day, yeah. So traveling here, you're pretty sure you're going in the right direction, but you're not sure. Um, where, How far off track you are, rather. And that the rest of that day passes uneventfully. So now we're on day 10 after the next morning? 
Let's see, this was four nine. Yeah, so now is day ten. Does Hisaka seem to think we're making progress? Mm. Now we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Like hum sound when he tried to talk. Yeah. To figure out which direction. Now I hear you. There you go. We couldn't hear you before. No. Yeah. Nope. What didn't you, or what was the last thing you heard? You didn't hear anything once you fixed your camera. I don't know. Your camera was down too. Did you hear me when I said that? Yeah, I fixed that. I think. Yeah, what, yeah, we didn't hear any. There was no nothing that we heard. Okay. She thinks she's making progress. She thinks you were making progress at the end of the last night. Waking up today, it is rainy, uh, but somewhat clear, so you can actually see pretty far away. And in comparing uh, your map with where she thinks you were traveling, she thinks that you had ended up... Um, kind of backtracking for a while there instead of going forward progress but she's pretty sure she knows where you are today okay so basically we went in a, a bit of a circle last time yes mm. gotcha you got to where your the icon is on the map mm -hmm. then you went up that way instead of forward Oh, okay. And then you ended up back that way. And now she's now pretty sure where you are, so... We're going, going towards the river itself. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, on day 10 I swap my spells back. Okay. Alright. So, halfway through that day... You've stopped for lunch or a break to rest for a bit. And while you're you're packing up and getting ready, everybody feels a thud. Like on the ground? Yes. Just one or is it more? Just one. And oh, then crap. There's another Did the one. Harper pick a fight with something again? That sounds like a big dinosaur. We should, uh... Well, no, the last time we felt a thud was when the Harper landed and then the two four-armed gorillas came chasing oh. after him. And then there's another <laughs> one. Thud. Should we be thud. running? Running where? We can't even discern where the thud's coming from. Is there any place we can get a perspective? I mean, like a, like a higher ground? or You can climb a tree. It's not very packed here. You can actually see some distance in the rain. So if anybody wants to make me a perception check, you may. Uh, you know what? I am going to use one of my Divine Senses feature. So anything within 60 feet, I'm aware of uh, the location of any Celestial Fiend or Undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. Nothing pops into your awareness there. Because weren't those gorillas undead? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I, I was thinking. It was gorillas. Those four-armed gorillas again. Did that make the whole ground shake? I don't think no, they, they were pretty shake. much in the trees. Yeah. 
This sounds like something like either like a big creature, like something giant or something like massive hitting the ground. Like, I don't know, a falling tree. Well, there's been a few thuds now, and they are happening a little more frequently. Uh, I take cover behind a tree. Let's see, <laughs> Nexus uh, with the 13. Um, Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Go ahead and tell me what I notice. Uh, you notice as you're kind of looking around because the thud is in the ground, so you can't really get a direction with it. But then on the fourth thud, you you think it's coming off from you know one direction and peering that way a few hundred yards away you see a rather large dinosaur coming your way uh i pointed out to her is that one uh, one we should be working oh yes Ooh, really big ones. Yeah, they're definitely carnivores. Uh, I guess we need to find cover. Yeah. Uh, um, or direction to the river and make a run for it? I'm not jumping in the river. Uh, the well, river uh, is beyond it. Yeah. Um, right. Is it and it kind of heading in our direction? It is heading in your direction. Um... I as a <laughs> as an artificer, I can take a non magical object and either give it have an odor or a non verbal sound. I was wondering if I could um, have the sound be a injured or dying creature, and maybe to deter it while we go in a different direction. What is your range? Um, probably as far as far as I could throw it. All right. Uh, for everybody going in a different direction, though, I am going to need a group stealth check. Can we not say we did? So we all roll stealth, and we have to like all be uh, a number of us have to beat a target. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Stealth. This cannot turn out bad. We don't have ears. That doesn't help. Ooh, look at that. I actually rolled deep. Holy smokes. And that's with disadvantage. Yeah, I failed. Oh, oh wait. We have disadvantage? I didn't catch that. Never mind. No, no I have disadvantage. Oh, I'm wearing okay. heavy armor. Oh, right, right. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, he's wearing the old pots and pans. Gotcha. Um, apparently not today. They're well well <laughs> lubricated, I guess. <laughs> well, you uh, you have good reason to be quiet. Yes, that's it. I, it, I think Twellen wants to go over and pet it. Yeah, I keep looking over my shoulder and stumbling <laughs> over things because I keep wanting to watch it. All right, so I see... Six rolls. All right, you can sneak away. Uh, as you throw, as you throw the thing, and it catches on the scent. This is what you see out there in the distance. Oh, it's a T Rex. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a good thing to avoid. That would definitely eat us. Did, did, that, did not want to have to deal with that thing. Uh, I somehow doubt they follow the Jurassic Park belief that those things can only see movement. <laughs> <laughs> but half of you succeeded in the group stealth roll, so you managed to sneak by it, as it kind of goes stomping out there looking for the source of that illusory smell you get around it yeah. 
and at the end of day 10, you find the river. I don't know about the rest of you, but I want to get out of this jungle. Uh, sadly, we won't be doing that. I'm about to say, we're about to go deeper into it. Mm-hmm. All right, we load up our. Um, we uh, we'll take a quick rest and make sure that we eat and all that stuff. What? You broke off. Oh, what kind of day? What time of day is it that we arrive? End of the day. Okay, so we'll go ahead and camp. But we don't want to go down river on the on the um, you know, at, at dark. So we'll camp, and then we'll we'll start. Okay. Well, if we are where she says we are, and we're trying to get to Camp Vengeance or Camp Righteous. You're trying to get to Camp Righteous. Okay, so if we are where she says we, she thinks we are, and Camp Righteous is where it's supposed to be. You're looking at two days travel. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Two, if not three days travel, perhaps. All right. So the next day, who has the who's helping to navigate? So I'm going to need a survival plus. Survival plus what? A survival, whatever the plus is for survival. Oh. Uh, minus two. I'm fine. Um, pro probably not the city bot. Five. So Twillin I'm and close. Azaka are navigating together. Okay. I'm sorry. It's actually a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. All right, so there's two of you. You have advantage. You have a plus five. Normal pace, or do you wish to try to rush? Uh, why would we be, be rushing? Was there a certain time period that we were supposed to meet that guy? No. Okay. But he um, did indicate that he wasn't going to wait all wait around all month or anything like that. Right. But I don't think we're too far behind, so I don't want to rush. I feel like that's dangerous. So let's let's not rush. Okay. So that day you travel twenty miles down the river. It is an uneventful day. You don't get lost. So mark off another day of stuff. You are on the river, so if somebody wishes to purify the water, you can have water to drink that way. Yeah, I'll go ahead Let's and purify it. Okay. If you want to, go ahead. I, I still still have two spells left over to smite my enemies. It's good. <laughs> and on the second day, no encounters, and you get you don't get lost. Yay! Game lost sounds bad. All right, so you are reaching Camp Righteous. Huh. Apparently, my uh, s smelly rock lasts forever until I uh, touch it again. So that or the T Rex, -Rex be... eats it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be upset for a while. Yeah, because when he poops it out, he's going to be like, wait, I smell food again. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are approaching in the dark. Or do you wish to camp and approach it in the morning? Hmm. That's a good question. The fort? Is it like a camp or like a town? I camp mean... Righteous. Well, that's if you want to approach it in the darkness, you can. What is not going to say? Did she say it's like, is it like a fortified area with like buildings uh, or is it like a camp camp? She avoided yeah. it. Uh, I do not know. I have never been there before. Is there any light coming from it? 
when it's still downriver, no. Uh, probably be best to approach during the day because I don't want to actually because if they have like a bunch of human guards, I want them to think that we're some invading force or something. <laughs> I don't see why we can't approach at night. I mean, if there's shelter there, I know you big guys like you know beds and stuff. Yes, but the big guys also don't like to be filled with arrows. Why would they treat you with arrows? If they can't clearly identify us and this place is full of undead, they may shoot first and ask questions later. Well, I'll still be a problem in the morning. They'll still shoot you with arrows. No, they'll be able to see in daylight. We hope. I mean... Uh, I, I, I would assume that some of them can see in the dark, so... Um, let's let's I mean, approach it. If it's people, okay. and they're living there, presumably you, they would expect travelers to occasionally show up looking for shelter. It's, uh, from what we understood from the Harper, right? He told us that, or from in town, even, Camp Righteous was set up by a group of religious militants? They're still people, right? Like you. You're a religious militant. I'll agree. <laughs> Doesn't mean we're on the same side. <laughs> uh, side schmides, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. if they're people and they expect travel to show up, I guess they'll either invite you to dinner and eat you or invite you to dinner and let you have some food. You. <laughs> As I said, group consensus wants to approach at night. I am perfectly fine with it. Okay. Who is uh, lighting torches, I guess? Tom doesn't tend to carry any. Yeah, I don't need them either, so I... Um, I'll, I'll, oh. The paladin can do it. I'll just draw my sword and light it. <laughs> Uh, because it actually provides light up to like 30 feet. That's pretty bright. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sorry. Light and uh, 40 foot radius uh, sheds bright light in a 40 foot radius and dim That's light an uh, additional 40 feet. So it's very bright. I ain't sneaking so, up on them. <laughs> just don't point it at anybody, and I think we're good. I'm just going to hold it aloft like a torch. I will be standing close to you then. You don't really need to. <laughs> <laughs> Up to 40 feet away. All right, let me put Malwin and Ears up in the corner. All right, so Fixer, you should be able to see based on Thrax light then, right? Correct. All right, so up in the north, up in the top left corner is where you guys are coming from up down river. You're traveling up river. Okay. Let's see. Checking your line of sight, you should be able to see what you can see. So on the shore, now as you get closer, it looks like there may be a campfire or something further up. There are a few canoes uh, shored, dragged up onto the shoreline further up there. Uh, well, nobody seems to be approaching us, so head Slow towards. Approach. Yeah, we're gonna head towards the campfire. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's park our canoes where their canoes are, or near them. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I will slowly... You getting out there, or are you going to wait till they all land down ri or up river? Oh, I see. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, we would we would go ahead and go down river and or up river and and see if anyone pays attention. All right. Let me tell you what you see. A bigfoot. <laughs> Uh, the forearm zombie gorillas. You come upon an abandoned riverside camp strewn with wreckage. The tents are moldy and tattered. All the permanent structures appear to have burned to the ground. There are two intact rowboats tied off to a short dock, which is that there. North of the camp is a ridge that you can tell uh, let's see in the darkness. You can see the foot. It looks like the foot of a large statue of some sort. And so far, that's about what you can see. Uh, you you can hear a strange bird call. Hmm. Sounds like a warning. Maybe they saw us coming and... Oh, yeah, looks like something out. happened ah, here. Ah, 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 ah. What are you saying? Sounds like something happened here. Mm. Well, looks like something happened. They might still be around if that person making that bad bird call is still around. <laughs> <laughs> Pullen's uh, proficient in nature, right? Yeah. It sounds like a live bird call. Oh, it sounds like a live one? Oh, okay. An actual <laughs> bird. You said, you, you said strange, okay. Yeah, strange is in you never encountered the bird. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I will slowly... Well, I approach. mean, if you're going to put a lookout, right, and you want to do a, an alarm, a bird call makes sense, but you don't want it to sound like other birds, right? I'll, I'll take a glance inside the first tent here. We're pulling up on the shore? Yeah. Okay. Let us assemble. Avengers assemble. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll assume you park the boats there. But yeah, I'll take a quick glance inside this first... Uh... Uh, tent. Non-permanent structure. Yes. The tents look ruined, uh, either moldy, some look torn, some are slashed. By uh, This particular one looks like it was slashed by something sharp, a knife or a sword of some sort. There doesn't seem to be anything intact on the inside. There may have once been a bedroll that's been shredded. Something. So it looks like whatever happened happened a while ago, right? This, 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 these did not look good. It doesn't look like it happened in the past day or two, no. Okay. Well, whatever happened, it appears we might be too late. Let's look at that big statue. Yes. Hey, anybody notice this fire here? Still burning? Is it, is it still burning? It is still burning. It's a campfire. Oh. Are there tracks around it? There are tracks everywhere here. Oh, I, I see something. What what is that? There's a is a this is a pen or something over here. I think it's what making the weird I slowly approach. 
Oh, it. Uh, okay. It is a large bird. I will show it to you here. I think I have a. Uh, no, I don't. Why not? Hang on, we just lost Craig. Craig doesn't like the bird. Did we really? Yeah. I've been unexpectedly disconnected. If you want me to stop recording, please command me with Craig Leave. So does that mean he's still there? No. Yeah. He's completely off the voice, but the error message I'm seeing is failed to join. I persistently failed to join. It may be an issue with the voice server. Try changing the server region and server setting error 1005. Now recording. Craig's showing up as an heir. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. been his title for a while now. I don't know why. All right. Seems to be working at the moment, though. So you can see the, the token, if nothing else. It is a large, almost like an ostrich-sized bird. It looks flightless. Obviously, it's stuck in a pen. It has a heavy wedge-shaped beak. And it seems to be running around in that pen, panicking, calling out. Um, Every once in a while, it takes a, a almost like a peck with its big axe beak, and that's what it's called, an axe beak, at the pen itself, but it still seems stuck. I will call Asaka over and see if she can identify. I'm going to go take a look at that statue. All right. You mean the one I'm standing at the foot of? Yep. Now that, I do have a handout for you. Well, that lit the place up. Yeah, I'm not even there yet. <laughs> Torch bear. I'll do a religion check for the statue. I'm guessing it's some. it was supposed to be some form of deity at one point in time. I don't know how high it actually goes. Okay, never mind. Answer that question. Oh, it's, okay. it's a big statue. So uh, between yeah, that's the feet, a big... there seems to be... There's a door between the feet? Yep, hold on. So between the... the uh... Getting up close to it in the darkness, especially now with the big light, it appears to be an 80-foot-tall stone statue carved to look like a man with a crocodile on its back. Between the statue's feet is a stone archway leading into a dark tunnel. To the left of the statue is a crude animal pen with a, with a panicked bird running around inside of it. Huh. Hmm. Uh, religion check doesn't tell much, but Asaka looks at it and kind of scratches her chin for a minute. I think I have heard of this. Some sort of um, god? It is a local mythology. There, there was a story... Um, and she kind of thinks about it for a minute. Let's see if I remember. It It uh, went, In the early days of the world, man stood by the banks of a river, frightened. 
crocodile raised his head from the water and asked, What troubles you, cousin man? Man said, I must cross this river, but I fear to enter the water alone because it teems with your brethren. Crocodile repl replied, It's true, you would not be safe, but I will carry you across the river safely on my back if you promise to return the favor. Man agreed, and Crocodile bore him safely across the water. When they reached the far bank, Man asked, How can I repay you? Crocodile replied, I wish to see the realm of humans, but I fear to go there alone because it teems with your brethren. You must carry me on your back across your realm. Man had been tricked, but a promise is a promise, so he carried Crocodile safely on his back across the entire realm of humans, a journey that lasted many years. He also swore in his anger that never again would men and Crocodiles be friends, and so it has remained to this day. That's a weird thing for to build a giant 80 foot statue about, I guess. She mm. shrugs. <clears throat> I think all statues are weird. Those uh, round things blocking out light before the statue, are those like bigger tents or? Are they the parts, things that were burned down, or...? Uh, these are bigger tents. Oh. Quillen curiously checks one out. I'm over. <clears throat> Let's uh, see. I think the close, closest doorway was here. There's one there, and there's one there. It's all black to me, though. Yeah, hold on. So, uh, I'm surprised he didn't want to talk to the bird. Hey, Tulin hasn't spoken with big animals that you know of yet. Oh, I thought the bird was a small animal. No, no, it's no. So it's, it's two big, by big, two. Big it's large. large. Oh, I misunderstood. When you said two by two, I was thinking two inches by two inches. Oh, that ain't big. <laughs> Panicked. Set a pen. All right, I will move like you into it. it. Has it looked like it's eaten in a while? It looks kind of scrawny. Oh, yeah. Did she identify the bird for me? Oh, it's an axe beak. An axe beak? Yes, an axe beak. See, it's it's beak on its face. Oh, okay. I guess. Uh, the tent is also not completely ruined like the others are. It is somewhat intact, but there's still nothing inside. It looks like it's been thoroughly ransacked and gutted. Do you all want to do a more methodical search of the camp? Yeah, because... before we try anything else. Um, and I'd like um, to... I don't know what to do with the bird. Uh, is the X -B... Leave it for now. Leave, leave it for now. Well, I'll just check it with her. Like, is it normally like a mount? Like, why, why keep it in a pen? I'm just kidding. Maybe they ate them? Yeah, I suppose. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll take a look around the camp. Mostly, I'm looking for kind of like signs of light. Um. Yeah. Let's let's go through the camp together and basically double check. See if there's any survivors somewhere. Dead bodies. Waiting to rise.
Something like that. Are you guys like all yeah. spreading out, or are you moving as a group? Let's say relatively close to each other. Okay. So, tell me where you want to go first. Let's do the north side. Yeah, around the bird, so okay. this area. So these tents look like they've been mostly slashed open, clawed open. Some are almost to the point of rotting away. They are so moldy or mildewy. But there's, mm -hmm. you know, they've been thoroughly ransacked, so there's nothing of value in any of them. These over here... Outhouses? Seem, seem to be latrines. Things over here by the but behind it. Mm hmm And the ruin? How recently was it burned down? I assume that's one of the permanent structures. Yeah, that that area. Is oh, the to the area. south? Yeah, no. No, no, no the, the north of the tents. Where the going is now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those are also the remains of tents. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see it now. They're just in worse condition as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's all head to the south. Then. Yep, we'll go south. All right. So this one here looks like it was one of the larger tents that is mostly gone now. There's a few more of the smaller tents. If this was uh, military, the big ones were probably officers, and the small ones were soldiers. Hmm. Um, I'll check the big ones, considering... They, do the big ones look in slightly better condition? The tents themselves, yes. Okay. They look a bit more reinforced, a bit more watertight, but they also look as though they've been thoroughly gone through. Okay. So, maybe, big nothing, and we don't know what happened here. You know, maybe the... Maybe the fire is the guy we're supposed to meet. And this one here is very subtly smoking still. Oh, well, that's different. Yeah. Search it. Uh, give me a perception check. I will give you the assist. Makes it easier that way. Fourteen. This one looks like it may have once been a shrine. There's um, like a very crude stone block that may have served as an altar. There's um, just some placement of old accoutrement laying around, broken glass and things like that. However, there's a peg on the wall. The, the intact wall, so this wall over here. Where hanging from it seems to be a... Uh, let me look this up. Is, is Twillin proficient in religion? Um, I don't think so. Let me double check. Okay. No. So there seems to be a small amulet or medallion that looks... I I, I am proficient maybe in I'll, religion. Maybe a holy symbol. You are proficient in religion? Yeah. It yeah. is a gauntlet, an upraised gauntlet, that you are pretty sure is a symbol of Torm. Oh. And it is a silver holy symbol. Well, this is Torm. Isn't that the vigilant one? Um, I think he's the. Was he dwarven? Or I know he's a one of the war gods. I don't remember if he was dwarven or not. You want, I don't know this. Remember the specifics. You want me to roll? No, you're proficient in it. Torm is. Uh, one of the lawful good gods. He is the god of duty, loyalty, obedience. 
Paladins and Truth. Ah. Huh. Okay. I will share that with the group. He is one of three deities collectively known as the Triad, consisting of oh, Illmater and Tyr. Well, this is interesting. And this was found in the rubble. Does it look like so? This looks like a a shrine to Torn. Yes. Okay. And somebody clearly didn't like that. We just lost Craig again. No. Craig does not like All this. All right. Part. We'll ignore Craig. I'm also recording. Oh. He's an unhappy robot. No, I'm not recording on OBS, but Twitch is getting it, so. I've got it anyway. Okay, well. Interesting. Well, not much here. I will keep this, though. Hell, that was the one I was thinking of, I think. Torm is an ally of Helm, though they are often on different sides of the fence, I guess? Yeah, but Helm's the vigilant one. Or is known as the vigilant one. All right, let's take a break there so I can put my daughter to bed. Yeah, I was about to suggest it. Sounds good. All right. And 10, you said? In your yeah, memory? 10, about good. 10 minutes? Yeah. All right, see you in 10.
All right, we're back, I think. Alright. We got everybody now? Yay! We're ready for, for you to surprise us again with another... All right, a snake jumps out. <laughs> you did that one already. Yep. No repeat performances allowed. All right, let's see. Do you want to go into the latrines? Uh, not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> that is, Somebody that else wants to search from the gun. Not the first on my list. Twilight's more interested in investigating the fire and seeing why is it so lit. Who's tending it? That sort of thing. Um, it looks as though it's just been burning a while. Like somebody pot poured a ton of wood onto it, so it might have like been it was a for... bonfire once. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then nothing really into here. Someone's ready to go in. If you ever want to go, everybody wants to go in. All right. At the very yeah. least, if if it's clear inside, we can camp there. So this mm -hmm. is five feet. The ledge is five feet higher than the ground below it. Okay. Looking past the feet, it extends inside. The ceiling right here at the feet at the opening is 23 feet high. And it looks as though it peers into the darkness past some webs stretching across. And towards the back of what you can see is a seven foot tall ledge. That, and it seems to proceed further back just after climbing up that seven feet tall ledge of some sort. So it's hard to see what's past that. Hmm. So let's go to the ledge. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great idea. All right. Twillin. Yeah. I get attacked by a giant spider, right? You get attacked by a giant spider. <laughs> no. Uh, as you walk across the, the floor there, give me a... Mm -hmm. uh, nope, never mind right here the ground opens oops that's not what I want the ground opens up beneath you and you fall 20 feet ah. oh. taking 11 damage in the fall okay Ow. ouch Are you okay down there? Uh, 
It's a bit rough the first 30 feet. Uh, while I'm down here, search. I'll lower down that rope of climbing whenever he's ready to uh, climb back up. Uh, down Thanks, there is out for... some dust, but nothing else. Okay. Uh, hold on to the rope and let him pull me up. Okay. I let the rope of climbing do its thing. You can nod it and give him advantage climbing up, and it's not that bad, so 20 feet. All right, you're back up over here. Now you have a 20 foot by 20 foot ledge, uh, pit. Uh, there does seem to be a narrow, a, a narrow, a narrow ledge along the walls going by it. You may be able to hug the wall and creep over. Well, we're probably going to need a scout again, right? We can, if we can get the, the, uh, my, uh, robot on the other side, we could have it walk forward. I'll well, I mean, but probably... I mean, we're, regardless, we're going in, we're probably going to need another scout, right? Maybe I should yeah. just go spider. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. Okay. I'll say the robot could be a trap finder. Oh well. Spider across. Fix it. All right. So as the spider now, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, actually, I got a bookmark spider. Since I use the giant wolf spider so much. There should be one down in the character sheets that you can roll off of. Oh, I haven't found that yet. I'm just using the monster manual. Ba, 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 ba. Giant rat. Giant wasp. Giant wolf spider. Okay. Uh, perception plus three. Twenty-three. Nice. All right. I'm incredible. Are you going along the wall, the ceiling, what? Ceiling. All right. So as the ceiling, when you're here, he dang it. Might want to back that music down just a little bit. Yeah. Hold on. on the wrong layer, I think. Oh, excuse me. Didn't mute. All right, am I on the right layer now? So when you're here, you notice that in the walls, um, kind of between the webbings, seem to be grooves that go from floor to ceiling. Like something slides up and down? Possibly. Um, is it... Could you specify where... I mean, like, are they on both sides? or Both just one sides side? of the hall. It, okay. From floor to ceiling. And at which spot? 
between the webs. Oh, so on so this, that this marking here? Spet? No. There, where the webs <coughs> are. Oh, stretching. in the square itself? Yeah. Okay. Um, is it possible to clear away the webs? You can clear away the webs, yeah. Some of them, anyway. Okay. I'll try to brush them off so that they can see where the bars would be. Well, the, the thing that goes up and down would be. Okay. Uh, does there seem to be, like, a trap or trigger in the ceiling, or is it... Like, it's like there's going to be a response. You don't notice any triggers, you just notice these grooves. So either okay. something slides out so, of them, or up them, up and down them, or something. Okay, go uh, past it on the ceiling. All right. All right. Nothing happens. You see more grooves on the next square. Okay. When I get to this point, wave my hands up in the air and gesture at the, the grooves. You know, like, trace them. So one of the other players can know. Oh, I see what he's doing. Um, all right. Well, we'll start working slowly across the pit, um, I suppose, while he still does that. And I, I go to the end. Well, the ledge. All right. Well, you see more grooves there in the webbing area. And you get to the ledge. Being on the ceiling... You see if I can scroll my map over a little bit. All right, hold on. People going across the ledge. Yes. How are you getting across the ledge? You climbing down and climbing up the other side, or are you shimmying along the little ledge that's on either side? Um, I do. think I think we should try just walking across the little ledges on the side. Unless you're just not agile enough and you might want to just crawl in and crawl out. <laughs> like, is walking along the ledge, is that going to require a roll? An acrobatics check. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, well, yeah. We could just put the, the rope on the other side and um, it should be okay. Um... We could crawl in and use the rope to climb out, kind of thing. The the rope that we have. Yeah, that sounds like a, a good enough plan for me. If uh, Is there any places to attach said rope, or is somebody going to have to actually hold it? Looks like somebody might have to hold it. There's nothing up to the point where the spider's at anyway that can be tied to. Alright. Um, Fixer, you think you know first and hold. Um. Hmm. We'll need somebody on the other side so they can hold the rope. Uh, I'll see if... Uh, the my little bear companion can make it to the other side and then it can hold the rope all right it may make an acrobatics check all right well this is gonna be fun it got us 16. 
Okay, it is shimmying across. It looks like it's going to get over there. All right, from here the spider can see. At this point, after the seven foot ledge, there's now 16 feet between the ground and the ceiling in this area. There is another Did ledge. Wait, so, so it's a pit? No. There's a seven foot ledge. It was 20 feet, right. 23 feet from ground to ceiling over here. Now it's 16 feet from ground to ceiling over here. Oh, I get it. Okay. Because you climbed up seven feet, or the right. ledge does. The floor is tiled in a four by four foot pattern of squares. Uh, beyond that, there also seems to be a uh, four by four pattern of squares on the next seven foot ledge. And above that, you can see there is a door. On this last little section is seven, six, nine foot from ceiling to this upper ledge and a door. Does the door have a handle or um, uh, looks like you just push it open? Has no apparent mechanism. handle or latch. It just looks like a wooden door. Hmm. Framed be in a stone frame. Okay. Uh, move across the ceiling to in front of the door. across the ceiling and the bear gets over there. Um. As you're going across the ceiling, you hear the sounds of something hissing out as blades slice out of those grooves in the wall. Yeah. And the bear must make a deck saving throw. Or become two little bears. Well, that's sad. It doesn't get proficiency in any saving throws. 21. All right. oh, it, well. it takes half damage. Uh, now i got to figure out how much health it's got. So it takes seven damage. Okay. It's got a decent amount of health left. Okay. I'll just fix it when I get over there. Huh. Okay, so blades popped out of the slid out of the walls. Was it like a a vertical like saw blade? Okay, um, like a scything blade that comes out on either side of the hallway. Oh, okay. Uh, how uh, how far up are these uh, these things? Can we like crawl under it, kind of thing? If we were to go low, floor to ceiling. Do. You know, I'm getting the feeling this thing doesn't want us to explore it. Yeah. And I misspoke on the pattern. This tile of 4x4 four four is on the floor here. There's also a 4x4 four four pattern on the door, on the wooden door itself. Okay. Is it just like a straight geometric, or is there any kind of distinguishing features? Like, uh, are some of the squares different than some of the other squares? Seem to be identical squares. So no, like, step here. <laughs> Which is how the spiders seem to avoid them, right? Or did the spider just not trigger them? Hmm. OK. 
Okay. Um, I, I would suggest your bear get back in the pit. Well, wait, it only spoke. Ag, the you blades, they like, oh, I can't hear you. You broke up. Can you hear me now? Nope, still can't hear you. I gotta figure out what's going on. Can you hear me? Yes? No? Test, test. How about now? There we go. Yep. I'm disconnected from Discord Something's briefly there. there. All right. So I was asking, did it like shoot out once and stop? Or is this something that maybe the, the bear should like jump back in the hole again? Because it's going to continuously sawing. Um, it seemed to come out once on both sides of the hallway, floor to ceiling, in both sets of those grooves. And then back into the wall it went. Maybe when we get to the other, or close to the other side, we can look to see if maybe there's something on the floor. Yeah. All right. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll 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 go into the pit. I'll have the rope sort of climb me up so I can kind of get like right in front of where he is without actually touching the floor. Mm -hmm. I'll be there, climb but on up? the rope, the climbing rope. Yeah, but. It, it oh, just wait. can create knots and stuff. It, no, no, it no, no, no. Yeah, it needs to have something to attach. Well, it's attached to it. We were going to attach it to him, right? That was the whole point of having him yeah, over we're... there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to attach to the bear. Yeah. And if, if the blades come out again and hit the bear again while he's just standing there, then we put the bear inside the pit and we'll deal with that. But if they don't come out again, we'll keep the bear. Don't Just don't move the bear. Um, and mm -hmm. we'll... Uh, as and long as the bear is sitting still after it happened, nothing seems to be mm -hmm. happening. That's what I expected. Okay. So we'll have the rope kind of tied to the bear, and then I'll kind of pull up kind of beside him, but I won't be touching the floor or just, like, peeking over. And can I check the tiles on the floor then and see if I can find what looks like a pressure plate or something, something that might have triggered that? You may make a perception check. For this one, I will use the inspiration. Or because, investigation, if you wish. I don't think my investigation is any different. Nope, it's not. I want to find it, so I'm going to use the inspiration on it, okay? Uh, where is it? There's my inspiration. Wait, I can't, can't I use that one for a reroll later on? No. No, this is the one I have to just get that. Okay. Yeah, this one gives you advantage. All right, I'll use investigation. They're both a plus two, so it won't make Nineteen. All right, so you're looking around, and you are... 99% sure that there is no pressure plate on this floor. Hmm. What sensed it? How tall is your uh, is your? It's just a uh, medium creature. Okay. Hmm. It's got to be something that triggered it. Quillen didn't trigger it when he was further up. But we can't just climb on the ceiling. Um, I'll yell down to Twillin. Uh, I, I don't suppose that... Uh, wait, I can see the door from here, right? Because I have good. I have the gut. The... So... Not hanging from the ledge, no. Oh, right, yeah. I wouldn't it's, be able to see It's another seven feet up. Yeah, okay. Trillin comes so, forward. So what from this angle, what do I see exactly? You see two grooves in the wall. Mm 
Wait. I will put oh. them there since okay. people f see them now. Okay, now I understand. Okay. Hmm. So there's a 10 foot by 10 foot section of floor. The cobwebs are kind of sliced through and just kind of hang in there limply now. The two grooves on either side of the hallway opposite each other. There's a seven foot ledge here. And then another 10 foot by 10 foot section with another seven foot ledge over here. But with your angle, you can see the seven foot by seven foot ledge, but probably just ceiling above that. Right, gotcha. All right, so Twelen can walk past these things. So wait, do they, you said these things go to floor to ceiling? Yes, floor to ceiling. But Twelen walks past them without triggering them. Oh, he's coming back. Hold on. I didn't notice a token moving. Yeah, he called out to me. <clears throat> Came back over. I retraced my steps. All right. Yeah, he, he comes back over and nothing seems to happen. Maybe it's because you're beast form? Does it have some sort of... Um, sure. Uh, I'll detect magic and see if I can't find some magical sense of this thing. Maybe there's something there that I'm missing. Casting it as a spell. Uh, yeah, I can't really do it as a ritual while hanging here. So There seems to be some divination magic all over this place. Divination, huh? But nothing specifically to this hallway. No. Seems to be the entire hallway. Wow, divination could be some sort of detect spell. But what it's what is it detecting? Would investigation be the closest, you know I'm trying to think of you know, fourth edition had dungeoneering, would investigation be the closest thing to where you know, if I was gonna design a trap like like this, how would I make it go off? You can right. roll that. Or Arcana, but I don't think we found anything magical with it, though. There just, is. Just Siora in the hallway. <laughs> so, uh, Tolan, you're in your form. You're, you're still in uh, spider form. Yes, okay. Oh, oh, you're using hand movements. I see you now. Wait, are you talking? Because we can't hear you if you're talking. No, we can't hear you. At first, I thought you were doing charades. Okay, can you hear me now? There we go. Yeah, at first, I thought you were doing charades. I was like, wait, your lips are moving. Damn. What's going on? That's weird that it's happening to me now. Okay, so Twilling crawls down the wall till he's level with you, mm -hmm. taps you, yep. and then gestures at the floor where mm -hmm. the bear is standing, and then does this. No, it's not the floor. There's no pressure plate. I don't know what there is. You see the pressure plate? Or is the whole floor a pressure plate? Ugh. Oh. So any tiny of touching the floor is going to trigger this thing. Uh, okay. Do you have a dagger uh, on your belt? Yeah, but um, let's move the bear back in before we do something. I like mean, that. well, if it's the whole thing's a pressure plate, if it's sitting on it, then it's been so we should be good in this section, and I can repair uh, it easily. So if it gets damaged, that's okay. Okay. Pull and yeah. your dagger. Okay. And then and then yeah. goes over to the groove on the wall, and then goes. Oh, you want me to try to jam it? Uh, okay, uh, I got I got what you're doing. Okay, all right. Um, sure. Well, let's test this theory about this uh, this floor being weighted already. 
So I will, uh, while his uh, his dude is there, I will put a tiny bit of pressure, like just my hands, like I'm pulling myself up, but not actually pulling myself up to see if it triggers the trap again. The grooves on the wall glare threateningly at you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. They're mean. But but nothing goes up. Nothing seems. It's to a happen. mean groove. Oh, if these things slice me up, I'm gonna be so mad at I'm mad at them. All right, I will I will slowly get up onto the the ledge with the uh, with with the robot dude. But don't oh, feel wait, bad. I'll put you back together. Give that, me oh, thanks. I appreciate dex that. Check. Ah, uh, of course. Uh, dexterity save. No dex check. Athletics. Oh, or oh, acrobatics, athletic. rather. Or, or acrobatics. Okay, acrobatics. All right, so you carefully pull yourself <laughs> up. <laughs> of course I do. And nothing oh. seems to happen until you start to, to reach over to hammer the blade in there. And now I need uh. both the bear and Nexus to give me a deck saving throw. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, I got rid of my one, so that's a positive. I just don't want it to get destroyed. That's a little bit more costly than just fixing it. Gotcha. Oh, it's agile. It's good. <laughs> Wait, it didn't go off of mine. Got a 20. I did. Yeah, or the bear did. I still have my trident, if y'all guys want to try to use that as a... Uh... Wedge. Uh, oh, hey. Oh, wait. You're 21. Did you roll okay. enough? Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> All right. So you both take half. Okay. Or the bear and Nexus both take half. So 10. 10. Okay. 10. What's that thing you can do? Uh, and as you as you were moving in here, you didn't feel the ground shift beneath you or anything. And the blades came out from all four sets of grooves. All at the same time. All at the same time. All four. So it's not the floor. Twelen, this is not the floor. But now that you're I know here, you're on the ceiling, but... Yeah. You can attempt to jam a dagger in one of them, if you wish. But it triggered when I... Well, if it seemed like it triggered when I reached out for it. But now my hand is already there, so... Yeah, you're kind of already here. All right. Yeah, um, I'll try to wind jam it in there. When the things went off, the is the grid pattern on the ledge in front of us, or is that only on the one above? The grid pattern is on the floor that you can't see from down here, and on the door over here that you can't see from down here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. All right. So yeah, I will. I will attempt to to uh, to jam the dagger in. All right. Give I don't know if I can roll for that. Oh boy, that I can do this. I can do this. Oh, that's not too hard. Sixteen. All right, you jam a dagger into one of the grooves. Okay. It seems to be stuck in there pretty good. Uh, go. Guys, they need another dagger. Anyone else? I got uh, crossbow bolts. A lot of them. Sure. Let's give me give me one of those. Uh, you don't think the crossbow bolts are going to be big enough to? Oh, uh, to hold it? No, no. I need something thicker. Anything. As I said, I still have my trident. But, but you need your trident, don't you? No, I use my. Uh, I... I have a long sword, a trident, a javelin, and my magical flaming sword. Oh, <laughs> um, sure. Give me the trident. Spikes. I have or an idea. Pitons would be good. Yeah, climbing gear. Anyone got climbing gear? We could do. No. Uh, the trident will work, I guess, if he's willing to give it up. Because I can literally. Well, do I think that. we have to come back this way later. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Well, it might break it. There's a chance, depending on how powerful these. Yep, I'll toss it over to you. All right, because I ain't jumping over there if I land on that thing and it is a pressure trigger. 
All right. <sighs> I won't make you. I won't make you make a deck save to catch the trident. I appreciate that. But you do need another right. strength check to jam it in. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see. Wow. All right. What is so that? You, you got both sides, you think, of this first 5 by 10 section um, of floor covered. I, I, I look at Victor. Can your bear take another hit? Um... I would probably want to at least maybe try to fix it a little bit before. Oh. It's pretty, it got pretty uh pretty pretty messed up. Yeah, and these things roll hard. If I were to fill a roll, it's gonna be ugly. All right, I, I need something else to trigger this floor. Uh, pull your. I'm gonna pull us back and down into the pit again. Both of us in the. Uh, give me a. I don't know something. We got. We need something to trigger this thing. All right, I'll jump. What? Not you. I, I, mean, I wasn't saying go hurt yourself. I just, just need to make sure. Oh, I can't hear you anymore. Man, uh, it, we're just going cycles with uh, with uh, with uh, with Discord today. Yeah. Yeah. Discord for the past couple weeks, it's not just me. Somebody else has been having trouble with yeah. the audio too during their stream. Yeah. Uh, Thresh, we can't hear anything. In fact, you can't hear anything you're saying. Uh, just oh, hang oh, up. Oh, now you Discord can. And... Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. So, what did you say you were yeah. going to do? I, I said I could jump, uh, jump to it, and land on it. If you want to take that risk, it, those blades hurt. I assure you. From experience. Yeah, but I mean, well, I'm not all that tough, but I should be tough enough. <laughs> the I mean, tank the is out. The little the little bear is out of the way, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, we pulled him the bear inside too. So move your bear inside the pit. There, fixer. Yeah. There. Yeah. And I'll just simply move across and climb up. Let's see if it works. Oh, you're gonna climb up the pit. Yeah, well, I mean, I could try and jump it, but I don't know if I can make it. <laughs> you can climb up. Uh, jumping is... If you long jump and you run at least 10 feet, or move at least 10 feet before, you can make a... Uh, you cover a number of feet equal to your strength score within limit of your speed. So if your strength is an 18, you can clear 18 feet. Okay. Uh, well, that's 20 feet, isn't it? No, 5 by 5. five oh, okay. 10. So right. as long then as you I'll have 30 jump. feet of movement and a strength of at least a 10, you can jump over that and land there. All right. And then that's what I'll do. I'll jump and land. All right. As and if you, need be, I'll keep roll, I'll, I'll turn it into acrobatics and keep going. <laughs> as you land there, blades come scything out of the walls in front of you, but there seems to be a strange clicking noises on the grooves beside you, and blades don't come out there. Hmm. Success. All right, but now we need two more things to jam the other blades. Oh. Uh, I'll pull out my long sword and jam it into the side. I hope we don't need these. Ironically, I still have my mace and javelins. Um, would the javelin be long enough to prop and stab into both? No. No. Oh. Wait, Not where's my... the trident? No. Oh. No, it's only five feet. It doesn't give me. Oh, it's not that kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right. Um. All right. Uh, guys, so we need one more thing to stab into this thing. Who's got something? So is this your flaming longsword? No. Uh. No, my flame tongue is a great sword. Oh. Okay. Give me a strength check. 
the long sword is that one I picked up way back when in the mine. Or, uh, castle. Okay. Strength check? Yes, sir. God, that was pitiful. Uh, you think it might be in there okay? Yeah, I, even I think that's not in there okay. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I haven't used We lost sound. You got. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna retry. Okay. You pry it out. And slide okay, it I right up. back into the spot. You think it was in there before? <laughs> I give up. Uh, apparently, high strength characters are not supposed to roll well. So there's it's only the sorcerer. Which, uh, yeah, it's it's the low strength characters that roll well on their strength checks. The high strength characters are just like, ah, whatever. All right, Twillin, give me a dex saving throw. Okay. Oh wait, I'm a spider, so I might I'm different than my normal. Oh, no, not. 13. Okay. You take one point. As passing yeah. through that section, blades come out, but only one blade comes out and nicks you for half of two, so one point. Oh. So even on the ceiling? Yep. Did I set it off? Or I don't know. You don't know. You okay. were running through and it came out and nicked you. I, I proceed through. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that looked effective. All right. Nothing seems to happen as you get back over to the door. Joe, when I passed I through, did did the blades come out on both sides of that section? No, just one side. So three. that weather one side would have been perfectly safe to pass through? No, they reach across. Three sets oh. of grooves are now covered. Okay. We okay. just need to stab one in the other one, or just risk taking the 1d8, whatever. Uh, I mean, depending on how much you take, I mean, I do have a few health potions. I think we have a few of them scattered around that we could just drink a couple of those. And I can do some cure wounds. Was it a single blade or was it multiple blades on each side? Uh, one blade, I guess. Do I think it would be possible to intercept that blade? Intercept how? Like as if after it comes down, it would be possible to like break it or bend it before it goes all the way back up? Probably not. Okay. So pretty fast. Yeah. All right. So what's the plan with the last groove? So nobody has anything else they can provide? I no. I, have... I, I got bolts in there. I mean, I don't know if we could just start jabbing, you know, 20 of them into the grooves and just make that work, but they're not quite big enough. That's all I got. 
Oh, hey, I have two daggers. What do you know? I didn't know I had a second one. That's what I, that's what I get for not looking at my character sheet, right? All right. So I have a... Good job, me, right? All right, all right. So I will get up and jam it into... All right, give me a strength roll. All right. What is this? The one? I have seen. And as you climb up there, and before you go up to there, that blade yeah. comes out of that other side again. But nobody's in that spot, so. Oh. And with your check, you jam it in there, and you're pretty sure it's stuck. All right, guys. Uh, this looks clear, but let's uh, hurry. Get hurry up and get through, just to be on. Uh, so I will crawl up this is another seven this is another seven foot ledge there is uh you can climb up and hang from this the edge it looks like there is a little bit of a lip that you can balance on it without stepping on the grid if you are so inclined and then you have another seven foot ledge here and it looks like a wooden door up at the top and it's got a grid, you say. What's the grid made of? Like, is it like a it's, different style of stone? Seems or to be is it drawn? Carved into the stone. The carving. Let's see if there's specifics here. You know, I'm just oh, going to say for this is, day, the rogue ain't getting paid. It is tiled in a 4x4 four four pattern of squares. What is a tile? Interesting. It is wall to wall, just past this little bit of a ledge. So you can stand at the top of the ledge without stepping on the tiles. But after that, it goes from wall to wall, all the way across. Hmm. Okay. So, all right. So the only place I can't uh, is just this little tiny lip, basically, that you'd have to balance. Yeah. I could just uh, repair the bear, and we can just kind of just push it over and see what happens. Uh, yeah, start repairing the bear. Um, <laughs> stay, stay in the pit, though. Uh, I don't know what this will do. Um, and we'll we'll see what we can do. Um, Twillin. Why don't we try hitting the same stone? Like you hit your stone, uh, uh, your stone at the same time that sort of matches the stone I hit. You mean on the wall? Yeah, on the on the wall. Right. I hit the one on the floor. You hit the one on the wall. Sorry, I shouldn't have spoke. Yeah, I, I gesture at my wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That my wall. Life. I'll point. Yeah, I'll point to your wall, and I point to the floor. And I'm like, yeah, I hit this one, and I'll point to like uh, the one like right in front of me here. And you hit the one that's corresponding to it. We'll see if it does okay. anything. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. Ready? So I move down. I move down on the wall parallel with you, and mm -hmm. I, I'm facing you. And I go. I just like, I don't know. Touch it. I don't know. Touch it at the same time. Oh wait. Um. I don't I know which one. I'm pointing. the bottom one. So I'm gonna touch this. So you would do the bottom one, the bottom right corner. On the door. Okay. On the door. No, on the wall. They're, the ledges all have these grids. That's what he thinks, right? No. And then the floor no, itself no. has a grid. There's a 4x4 four four tile on the floor and on the door. Right. The, the wall, the, I see what he's saying. It's the the way the, the, the picture on the walls look weird. But, no, but, it's just uh, yeah, it's, on the wall or whatever. It's only on the door, right? Yeah, only on the door. Yeah. So you hit the top of the bottom right corner while I hit this one right down here, and we'll see if it has some effect if we hit them at the Okay? All right. Ready? Three, two, one, touch it. And we, we touch it at the same time. It doesn't do anything. All right. You're just touching it? Yeah, I'm just touching mm -hmm. it for the moment. Nothing seems to happen. Okay. What does it feel like? Tile. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Oh wait, um, with is would my uh, detect magic still be on? It, it goes for ten minutes as long as I'm concentrating on it, and have I wouldn't let it go. Damage? Oh right, I would have had to roll for that, right? Did you take damage? I did. I took one from the saw blade. I took so, ten. So concentration check DC ten, or concentration saving throw rather. You mean constitution? You mean right? Con yeah, constitution saving throw. Is your concentration roll? Uh, ah. Oh. Okay. Oh. Of course. Now I roll bad. All right, so I do not have that on anymore. All right, all right. Um, 